Welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's episode is the long-awaited conclusion of the brilliant Firefly, Revolt, the final book in the original trilogy by Daniel Hines. Thank you for being so patient with us as we finished it. Thanks! Enjoy the episode! The Brilliant Firefly, Revolt Chapter 12, Saving the Day Blasters, jets, talons. It was a wild, shrieking blur. Together, Jill and Harpy hit the water and sunk into the depths. Everything suddenly muted and slow. Everything but the shark. No! Jill cried, her suit letting her see through the water as her mom was approaching by the gaping maw. She kicked free of Harpy and rocketed towards her, but she was so far away. So very, very far. The shark loomed huge, its mouth an endless void. I'm not going to make it, Jill realized as the jaws started to close. I'm not going to make it. No, she cried. The shark lurched violently to the side, missing her mom by inches. Jill watched, amazed, as the creature tumbled through the water in the wrong direction. What the? Hey, Firefly, came a voice. It was Crimson Cannonball. So you needed a hand after all, huh? Jill watched as Riptide and Cannonball flashed by, working together to push the shark up and out of the water. She smiled, heart leaping. Little help here, big guy? Right, coming. Jill flew over and joined them, hauling the shark up and out of the water. Riptide couldn't fly, but he rode into the air on a slender pillar of water. Together, the three of them launched the shark into the air. It soared in a wildly thrashing and lashing mass of tentacles and chomping teeth, but only for a moment. Then, it hit the water with a thunderclap, belly flopping and splattering against the waves. Well, that's one problem down, said Cannonball. The three of them hung in the air together, riptide balancing on his column of water. I gotta get my mom out of there, Jill said. That's your mom? Long story. We're not far from shore, said Riptide. Please, leave your mother's safety to me. What, really? Jill asked. It's already being handled. Jill glanced and saw her mom was being lifted by a family of gray dolphins. The laughing, splashing creatures began to swim her gently to shore. Jill had almost forgotten that Riptide could command some sea creatures. It wasn't useful all that often, but Jill could kiss those dolphins right about now. Guys, thank you, she said. No sweat, said Cannonball. What's the plan? Jill told them everything. They were a little alarmed that Firefly turned out to be a teenage girl, but they were surprisingly quick to get over it. It turns out superheroes are used to putting up with some weirdness among their coworkers. She had planned on them to help cover her escape, but that little glowing flower had smashed their plan to pieces. It was time for a new plan, something less clever and more punch-based. We gotta stop that bomb, but they're all over me, Jill said. You guys gotta keep Harpy's friends off my back. I'll take the tin man, said Cannonball. And let me quench the fiery fellow, added Riptide. All right, Jill said, I'll get the bomb. She looked back and forth between the two heroes. She hadn't thought much of them when she lived in Giga City, but she would be forever thankful that they had her back. All right, guys, Jill said. Let's go save the day. Riptide smiled and flipped into a dive. Crimson Cannonball whooped and rocketed away. Jill spotted Harpy on the horizon. She was making a break for it, flanked by her flying bricks. Jill, Speck said. They're getting close to the city. I'm on it, Specs, she said, kicking on the jets and blasting into a brilliant corkscrew. She closed on Harpy in a flash, but Giga City loomed huge on the horizon. The island must have moved closer while Jill was unconscious. No time to lose, Jill thought as she closed in on Harpy. The blaster hadn't worked before, so she abandoned it. Instead, she dropped her shoulder and used her body like a missile, slamming full speed into the villain's back. The brick bird woman spun like a cat and they collided once more. This time, Jill blocked the talons and slammed an elbow into Harpy's solar plexus, 
watching the mutant wince. Watch your head! She glanced up and saw the crimson cannonball blast into the brick knight, shattering his lance and knocking him from the saddle. The dragonfly managed to catch his rider before he hit the sea, but Cannonball was after them again, slamming the armor from his foe's body. And let's turn down the heat. Jill spun and saw Riptide rising from the sea, his legs lost in a curving dragon of water. The burning red brick tried to get away, but the waters came too fast. Like miniature dragons, they rose from the sea, lashing out at the fiery woman and dousing her flames. What? cried Harpy. I thought you were tough, Jill said, coming to hover in front of her. Afraid of a fair fight? Die! She snarled, and her talons lashed out, screaming over the metal of the armor. They broke apart and clashed again, like an intricate dance they wove around each other in the air. It was beautiful and graceful, but Jill knew it could easily prove fatal as well. I can't let you drop that bomb. Jill said while they grappled. You'll never stop me! Harpy snarled back. Last chance, Harpy! In response, Harpy flapped her enormous wings and drove herself at Jill, talons outstretched to kill. Time seemed to slow. Jill could see the sunlight gleaming on each of Harpy's talons, making them glow red as blood. They reached out for her, curled with deadly purpose. And Jill, Jill remembered Grandpa Jack. Jilly Bean, he had said. Mad doesn't equal strong. Mad is the wind, howling all night to no effect. You want to win a fight? You be the lightning. Cool, calm, and collected, watching for that perfect time and place to strike. That's the one to watch out for in a scrap. That's the one who wins. So let those bad winds howl, baby girl. You just keep it cool. Cool thought Jill, cool and calm and collected, and dangerous, that too. The talons slashed and Jill waited, waited, and finally dodged at the last moment, letting Harpy's rage carry her by in a wild lurch. Head clear, Jill lashed out with a roundhouse kick that cracked into Harpy's wing. The brick screamed, a strangly bird-like scream, and flapped away tried to flap away. Jill rocketed forward and sank a fist into Harpy's gut, doubling her over. As she pitched forward, Jill rocketed up and struck her heavily armored knee into Harpy's jaw. There was a crunch that Jill felt more than she heard. Never stop me! Harpy squawked as she went down. Jill watched in horror as the bomb slipped from her talons and tumbled towards the bay. The red glow seemed to get brighter as it fell. Jill flipped into a dive, flaring her jets. Bombs falling, Speck said. I'm aware, Jill said. Check my camera. Oh, man, Spex replied. The bomb fell in front of her, plummeting towards the bay. Jill reached out just a little more and snagged it by the iron handle. She pulled out of her dive just above the water and staggered back into the air. Even with the firefly suit, it was heavy. Harpy drifted past her, wings causing her to fall in lazy circles. Harpy's down in the bay, Riptide said over the comms. I'll round her up. And I have the bomb, Jill said. What do I do with it? Space, right? said Cannonball. Firefly used to throw things into space. No good, Jill replied. Harpy punched through my armor. I'm not spaceworthy at the moment. The ocean? said Spex. The ocean is as full of life as the land, Riptide replied. What about an island? Jill said. It would have to be uninhabited. Not exactly, Jill replied, kicking on her jets. The calm chatter faded into the background as she broke the sound barrier and kept on going. At that speed, it wasn't long before the Scarlet King's island appeared on the horizon. Jill, you sure about this? Spex asked. It's not my bomb, Spex, she replied. I'm just bringing it home. Jill slowed to a hover above the island, giving one last look to its volcanic spires and twisting brick forests. It was almost beautiful. Almost. Goodbye, Scarlet King, Jill said, 
and the bomb tumbled out of her grip. Chapter 13 Take Flight The bomb thudded into the canopy of the red forest, crashing through branches and disappearing into the brush below. For a moment, Jill thought it hadn't detonated. Was it maybe a bluff all along? No. The forest suddenly swelled with red light. It began at a single point and then spread. The explosion came a moment later, bringing the sound and the fury. It rushed past Jill in a howling surge and she tumbled backwards in the air. The red light became blinding. The howling became a barbarian's endless roar. Specs, what's happening? I think it was supposed to detonate in the air, right? It hit the ground in one piece. The energy is too concentrated. A tentacle whipped suddenly, impossibly, into the air. It had grown from the island, blended with the creeping ivy, and reformed into a brick monstrosity. I think you may be right, Jill said as the tentacle pushed past her and continued to grow. Like Jack and the Beanstalk, Jill thought. Uh, maybe you should get out of there. A dozen more tentacles surged into the air, each sprouting hundreds of feet and continuing to grow. The sky turned dark, clouds colored red and angry. Jill, get out of there! Right, said Jill, wrenching her stare away from the island below. She kicked on the jets and was immediately swatted out of the air by a tentacle as thick as a subway tunnel. It sent her spinning down towards the island. With a lurch, she pulled out of the fall just above the broiling red mass. Up close, Jill could see it was growing still, bubbling and surging and bulging. It wasn't many creatures now. It was all one creature. The island. The flower. It was one piece and it was growing dangerously unstable. Gotta go, she said to herself, flashing back into the air. She had only been low for a moment, but everything had changed above. The air was thick with red fog. Bright spines of lightning flashed all around, illuminating the gloom in bursts. Tentacles surged back and forth like half-hidden titans, searching for prey. Jill, the signal is scrambled still, trying to get the video feed going. Oh, oh, wow. Jill, you have to get out of there. Don't worry, Jill said. I didn't come this far to lose to an overgrown octopus. The firefly armor flared to brilliant life, a beacon in the fog. A tentacle crashed towards her and she burst away, swerving among the nightmare. Another tentacle swept down and she burned it in half with a full-strength blast of power. Up and up towards clearer air she soared, weaving through the maze of lashing death. The fog began to thin. The tentacles faded away. Crack! A serpent's tongue of red lightning crashed into her and the firefly suit went dead. She reached up, hands grasping at thin air, and then she started to fall. Dead weight, she crashed back into the red clouds, the dark storm. The tentacles knocked her back and forth as she fell, down and down, stunned and reeling. The island swelled and bulged around her. Too much of the mutating spore all at once. It was unstable. It couldn't hold. It was going to blow. No, Jill said, swimming back to attention. No, she roared. With a tremendous explosion, the island tore itself apart. Firefly! The suit rebooted and burned, burned hot and white and brighter than ever. Jill rose like a shooting star in reverse, regaining the heavens. She rose like a rocket, seeking the stars. She was a tight ball of focus, a singing body of grace. She danced through the tentacles like a ghost. The lightning could not touch her. The mist retreated before her burn, and Firefly, in all her glory, burst free above the trembling red clouds, a glowing beacon of pure light, a shining force driving back the gloom. And there, alone above the carnage, Jill paused to catch her breath. The day was saved. And what's more, Jill thought to herself, bewildered, I saved it. She floated there in the sky for a long time, long after the explosion had settled and pieces had melted into the sea, long after she'd heard from Specs and Mom, long after the thank you call from the president. She floated there. High above the world, she watched the sunset and thought of her dad, 
and Grandpa Jack. She felt serene, just her and the sun. Two lights burning bright against the darkness. Epilogue. One year later. Jill woke up to the smell of coffee and eggs. She still thought coffee was too bitter, but her mom's eggs were the best in Giga City. Led by her nose, she rolled out of bed and padded to the kitchen. Her mother was in her robe, eating her eggs, cup of coffee at hand. They eat together most mornings these days, sitting by the window. The window is beautiful, stretching floor to ceiling like the prow of a ship, and it shows all of the city sprawling out beneath them. They moved to the lighthouse earlier in the year. It was closer to Mom's work, and neither of them had wanted to stay at the farm. It turned out the lighthouse had an entire level set up like an apartment. It's more modern than Mom likes, but even she had to admit, you can't beat the view. Jill's phone chirped. It was Madison, sending her more costume designs. She seemed to think the classic colors were a little out of date. Jill laughed and played along, happy to have turned an enemy into a friend. School starts next week, Mom said, smiling. Do I really have to? I saved the world, remember? Jill slouched into her chair and began shoveling eggs into her mouth. Am I going to be hearing about that forever? You saved the world, and now you get to be a part of it. Jill grumbled into her eggs, but her heart wasn't in it. She was going to a new school specifically for the scientifically gifted, and Specs would be in her class. Truth be told, she was actually excited. Specs' father had been reluctant at first, until they'd found that Grandpa Jack had left Specs the farm in his will. Since then, well, Mr. Specs had been a lot kinder to his son. Big meeting today, Mom said. Are you nervous? A little, but it's just the core team today. Just the ones I already know. I figure that'll make it a little easier. I'm sure you'll do great. I'll do my best. Your best is always great, Mom said, giving her a kiss on the forehead. Your father would be proud. Your grandpa, too. Thanks, Mom. Upstairs, on the Firefly Command floor, awaited a group of the best heroes Giga City had to offer. They're all here looking to Jill for leadership, and it won't make it any easier to keep them waiting. She ate fast and dressed in her flight suit. With a hug from her mom and a final deep breath, she called the elevator and stepped inside. Her heart is pounding. Don't be ridiculous, she tells herself. You face down Scarlet King, but public speaking makes you nervous? The elevator dinged and slid open. Spex was there, waiting in the hall. Hey, Jill, you ready? As I'll ever be. Let's go, partner. They pushed into the lighthouse and there were cheers as they entered the room. There were only a handful of heroes waiting. Cannonball, Riptide, Grimchurch, Tower Twins, some others. Jill let them cheer for a moment and then she raised a hand for silence. Thank you all for coming, she said. Welcome to the first meeting of the Giga City Guardians. More cheers rang out. Jill found herself smiling, buoyed by their energy. She felt warm. She felt eager and open and excited for whatever would come next. Excited and happy. That, too. The End Thanks for listening. 